Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new performance improvements that Reflection got in .NET 7 that just came out in Preview 5 last week. Now Reflection for some people is the absolute devil and for some people is a solution that you kind of have to use because you can't use anything else sometimes. Wherever you stand on the spectrum, you cannot deny that Reflection is used everywhere, .NET and ASP.NET Core use it extensively and any improvement on the performance of reflection will speed up not only the framework so dotnet in general but your own code as well if you like the web content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com all right let me show you what i have here so i have a blank console application here and i have a person.cs class so this is a public class with a private field, an internal constructor, and then a private getter and a private setter. Now, yes, this could be a, a property, but I want to show the improvement. So I'm using this class as a demonstration vehicle effectively. And then I have this program.cs, which I can use to create a new person because my uh, person class is in this project, meaning I can still access the constructor even though it's internal. However, I cannot access any other method or the field in that class because they are private. Now, this is one of the reasons why you might want to use reflection to access something that is inaccessible to you. And when you're doing that, keep in mind that it's always very dangerous because private members of any class that you don't own can actually change without warning, meaning your code could break in the next version of, let's say, the NuGet package you're trying to access. So you have to be very careful doing this. And I would generally recommend against it. I'm only using it here to show you how you can do it. However, reflection isn't only used in that scenario. There's basically endless scenarios to why you might want to use this. So don't take this as a, this is how you should do it. I'm only using this to demonstrate the performance difference. Oh, I should also point out that this is a .NET 6 project. So this is running in the current .NET 6 version. Now, if I wanted to get that value and say age, then what I can do is I can get the type of the class that I want to access a member of, let's say person.getType, or if I have it as a compile time constant, then type of dot person. This isn't always possible, but sometimes it is. And then I can say get method, and I can get a method by name. So get age, and I can say invoke. And this will allow me to pass down an instance of the class I want to invoke this method against. And in this case, person doesn't have any parameters. So I can pass down an array that is empty and the object is a nullable object. And another thing I need to be careful with is because get age is a private method and it is part of an instance of this class, I also need to pass down some binding flags. So I need to say this is non-public and also this is part of an instance and this cannot be null because I know this method exists. And now if I cast this to an integer, then I can say console.writeLine age is, and I can grab the age. And this is using reflection to now tell me what the age was invoking that method. And as you can see, it is over here. Now, why am I using this example? I'm using this example because this thing over here, this invoke method is what is being improved upon in .NET 7. Effectively, the invoke method on method info, which is what this get group thing is actually returning. Let's go ahead and step into that. This method info class, also the constructor info class is also getting an update and also the property info class and also a dynamic method class. So all the invoke methods in those classes are getting that performance boost. Now we cannot compare what the performance difference is without benchmarking for both versions. So what I'm going to do is import benchmark.net over here that allows us to write some benchmarks. So it is over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new benchmark uh, class. So benchmarks go here. I'm also going to add a memory diagnoser here. And what I want to do is test a couple of things. First, we're going to have the person filled over here and reuse it for all our tests. And the first thing I want to benchmark is this get age method that you just saw. So this is exactly the same as before. However, you can actually optimize this by caching 
the method info. So this thing over here, from the type of all the way to the binding flags, this can actually be extracted into a field. So I can say get age method and now this is extracted and I can reuse it because this doesn't change. And this actually will save me some time. It's a good technique to optimize reflection. And I can say here get age method. Here we go. And in this case with the get method without any parameters, this is enough. However, I also want to benchmark the set method because the set method has parameters. And as you might have noticed, this invoke method over here accepts an array over here as the parameters and any object array as you might know already will actually box its parameters so if i pass down an array and the array contains value types like an integer then the integer will be put in a box and then it will be unboxed to be processed and that also slows things even further down and allocates more memory on the heap so for that i'm going to introduce the set age method as well which is exactly the same just the only difference is it's a set age method in the name and i'm going to add benchmarks for that first we have the same set age just set it and here is where you can see this object array which will box our number over here then i'm going to have a cached version of this where it's the same thing but i'm calling this set age method that i extracted for performance reasons and then in some cases you can actually reuse the arguments so if you can do that you can cache the arguments in a field and then invoke them every time with the same object i can do that by extracting the age parameters over here and then duplicating this over here and using those age parameters every single time. Now the other thing I want to show you because it's not only methods that actually get this boost it is also the constructor itself and the constructor in general has been a very heavy thing to invoke so it is very nice to see we're getting an improvement here. I'm going to write some benchmarks for this as well and the logic is the same so we're going to have the constructor there is a constructor um, info class which is the equivalent of the method info but for constructors so for the constructor this looks something like this again we're getting the type of we're calling the get constructor method same flags because this is still non-public technically even though it's internal it's not considered public and then we have to pass down an array of the types that correspond to the parameters of the constructor. So here I'm passing an array and the only type of I have is an integer. This is because the person constructor has an integer as its only parameter. If it had more, let's say it had a string, for example, here too, then this array would also need to have a type of string over here to indicate which one we're going for. I'm just going to revert that real quick. Here we go. And then I'm going to add the benchmarks. So the first one will be just the raw form. And that looks something like this. It's the same code as above, but we invoke it again. We're looking at this invoke method in this test. That's the performance improvement. So that goes here. Then we have the cast version where we're calling the one we have in a field. And then last but not least, we have the one where we cast all the eight parameters over there. So those are all the tests I want to take a look at and all have to do with the invoke method. Super, super important. Now I'm going to go here and comment this out and I'm going to say uh, benchmark runner dot run and I'm going to call the benchmarks class that I just created and this is in release mode and I'm going to now run this and wait for I don't know probably five minutes for this to finish for you it's going to be uh, an instant but let's see how all of these different methods perform so results are back and let's see what we have here so i'm going to scroll up and as you can see let's compare one after the other so first we have the constructor one and the constructor one in its raw form it takes 170 nanoseconds and it allocates 208 bytes of memory that's quite a lot just by caching the constructor info we reduce that to less than half which is pretty good and also a lot of the memory goes away because a lot of that memory is the array we allocate for the type and all that and then we actually improve the performance even better with the cached parameters down to 65 nanoseconds and then 24 bytes of memory so that's good stuff now the get age method takes 65 nanoseconds but the good thing is the memory allocated is the same for both the cached and the non-cached. Now the cached one is a bit faster, not significantly faster, but still a small improvement. And then for the set age method, you can see there's a performance degradation compared to the get age because it has that one parameter we need to invoke it with. So it goes to 82 nanoseconds, but the cached version is a bit faster. And then the cached parameters version, no memory at all, and also a bit faster than the cached method one. So what I'm going to do is keep a snippet of all those results. And now I'm going to go ahead and change this project to a .NET 
seven project. So I'm going to change that. And I'm also going to change the global.json. Okay, that is done. So if I go here and I rebuild this, you should now be able to see in the console that this will be built with .NET 7 Preview 6, actually, because I installed the next preview as well. But in any case, now I'm going to go with the exact same code and I'm going to run the benchmarks again and compare to see how they compare with the previous results. So results are back and let's see what I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this and I'm going to move it to the very top and then bring the old results below that. So let's compare. So the first thing is the constructor call. So the constructor call was 170 nanoseconds. Just by upgrading the version, that alone goes to 107 nanoseconds. But what would happen to the cast versions? The one where we cast the constructor info goes from 72 nanoseconds to 27 nanoseconds. And the one where we cast the parameters goes all the way down to 21 from 65. That is more than three times the performance, which is awesome just for upgrading the version then they get age version you go from 65 and 48 to 29 and 12 that is four times faster and then for the set age where we actually have a parameter as well we go from 82 to 44 from 64 to 25 and from 56 to 20. so a solid two to four times not percent times performance improvement just for upgrading the version and the good thing is, because Reflection is used heavily on startup, and when I say heavily, I mean heavily, you're going to see a difference in the startup performance of your application because of this when .NET 7 fully comes out. And it also has other benefits, for example, if you want to use this in a Lambda where startup time is important, this will also help you a lot. But now, how did they do that? Because two times or three times or four times performance improvements aren't easy when your framework is so optimized. Well, there's usually two ways things get that performance boost. Complete rewrite with spans, source generators, or calling into IL emitted code. Guess which one it is? They're emitting IL. Of course they are. So method info, property info, constructor info, and dynamic method now call to IL emitted invoke code. And if you want to learn more on how they do it, because it's very interesting, but I don't want to make this video super long, I'm going to leave a link to this uh, pull request down below and you can track the issue as well. But performance like this do make a difference just because of how much those things are used in our applications. So super glad to see them working on improving the performance of Reflection as well, because it's not going anywhere. Yes, source generators are cool, but Reflection should be faster as well. And if you're wondering how Reflection can be as good as something that is compile time, then check the link in the description up there and you might learn something you didn't know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.